see, preparing. I guess we're live. It says we're live on YouTube. So uh, let's hang out for a little bit. Joining us, and uh, thank you for those of you that are going to start joining us. Uh, I'm Kyle Seeloff for the Marlins Radio Network. Former Marlins Cliff Floyd and Charles Johnson going to hang out with us for a little bit tonight. And, and what we're doing here uh, on Fox Sports Florida tonight. It says we're live on YouTube. So uh, oh. let's hang out for a little bit. Joining us, and uh, I, hear you for those of you that are I hear myself. Hold on a minute. I hear myself on YouTube. I'm Kyle Seeloff for the Marlins Radio Network. All right, we'll mute that. There we go. Beautiful. All right, here we go. We'll try that again. Uh, but anyway, so September 23rd, guys, 1997. Uh, both of you guys, members of the Marlins, obviously. And that night, you guys clinched your first ever postseason berth. We're going to talk about, a lot about that as we watch some of this game. Uh, that was against the Montreal Expos. We actually played it on the radio last week. So um, it's amazing to see some of you guys. And Cliff, obviously, you were an Expo at one time. So that's, yep. uh, I'm sure that was, that was crazy. But hey, before we get into that, uh, first, how are you guys doing? How's the families doing? How's everybody? Yeah, everybody's good, man. Um, you know, I, 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 for a while, I thought I was going to go a little cuckoo. <laughs> but uh, I figured out a little routine. Um, fam's good. Thank goodness for online schooling and teachers giving their time up, man. Um, it's been it's been awesome uh, to see the kids a little bit more than I normally do, and uh, and um, we was making the best of it, maintaining, you know, not trying to cause a ruckus, and, and hopefully we get some normalcy back in our world sooner or later. How are you doing, Charles? How's everybody? Man, you know everybody's good. Um, um, just spend a lot of time with the family. The kids are home uh, from. From college and um, my oldest son from University of Tennessee and my youngest son from University um, Georgia Southern and, and so I got both of them home and they stay busy because they do some workouts here and there and and every now and then a good friend um, uh, Brian Burns uh, might come and join them and do some workouts and Nick Eubanks every now and then and they try to keep going they bike ride and do some different things and for me I just like Cliff man just trying to find a routine I get up in the morning and try to do some walking in the streets a little bit. And I try not to do a whole lot of running in the streets because I mess up with my knees a little bit because that's cement. <laughs> but at the same time, you got to get outside and get some of that sun and get moving around. And, you know, I'm just enjoying spending time with the wife. Are we cooking up different meals here and there and enjoying, just enjoying our time together a little bit. What do you think, I, what do you guys think this is going to be like, man, if they, if they come back and play? I mean, I know it's crazy. I know we really don't know anything, but it, from a former player's perspective, I guess to shut it down three weeks into spring training, how much time do you think you'd need? I, I mean, it, it's going to be crazy to see what happens here. How much time? I, I, I don't know. I, you know what? When this, this is the problem. When you have, and, and the guys are getting close to getting ready to start the season, and then you tell, you know, guys that's that, that close, big leaders who are saying, wait a minute, you're telling us to go home? It, it, you, you shut down, even though everybody's saying, look, I'm trying to stay moving, I'm trying to stay mentally sharp and all these things, you human. That human element kicks in and you get to the house. That's why, you know, they, they wait as long as they could to say, hey, y'all go home. They don't want to send nobody to the house. You know, they know <laughs> what can happen when you go separate ways. So I think it's going to take a little bit longer to get everybody back you know, acclimated with, with whatever surroundings you have to surround yourself with, the added things that's happening you know, precaution wise to make sure everybody's safe. And then, oh, by the way, I need you to hit a big league baseball and throw one 97 miles an hour consistently. <laughs> Good luck on getting these dudes ready and active uh, quickly. Yeah, you, you know, Cliff, I sit back and look at this and it kind of does remind me, but it kind of takes me there a little bit when. 94 strike year yeah. when we started in, in, right sometime in, uh, in May. And, um, but the only thing about the strike year is that we were anticipating knowing it was coming. So we were getting ourselves in shape and getting ready. And we had a long fight that whole off season and getting ready for the regular season. And, and when the season didn't start, it was kind of crazy, but we still kept in shape. But these guys don't know when they're going to return back, right? They have no idea what's going to happen. So I can't imagine just being in that frame of mind, not knowing 
when you come back. And then when they come back, you got to know they're going to be doing a lot of testing. You're going to be, you know, forehead screenings and, and you got to put your phone up to make sure you took your COVID test. And because mm -hmm. I, I was talking to Keith a minute ago, Kyle a minute ago, is that one thing about baseball guys, we spit a lot. <laughs> yeah. We spit on everything. We spit on gloves. We spit on baseballs. I mean, we spit in the dugout. I mean, <laughs> it, no, you're right. <laughs> you know, you know, I didn't think about that, CJ. You know, <laughs> they got an uphill battle, man. And, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know how you get these dudes to, you know, try to focus because one thing in every sport that has a comeback. The, the level of concentration that goes into trying to compete and win every night, like it's, just, it's just different just going out there and playing, right? We, we, if you told us right now to go out there and play, I mean, we ain't going to do well, but I can play. You right, know, right. when you ask me to go and, and compete and we don't know if there's going to be, you know, how many games going to be played, how you're going to have to play, how the roster is going to be situated, you're asking a lot to put W's in the win column, keep everybody healthy, from an owner's perspective, it's like, how do I pr protect my investment? You know how hard that is to sit there and say, how am I going to protect my investment? Because one year is everything I get. One year when you when you when you play, and you don't win, you go home. That's a tough year. That's a tough year to go home and swallow and get yourself ready. Yeah. Now yeah. you ask me to be careful, go out and win, like you said, CJ. Get my head swabbed every day. Uh, <laughs> don't spit. Don't trust me. <laughs> and, and, and then, you know, like, all these things, look, there's something called overload and overwhelm. I, I, I think that's something we need to look, you know, look at and, and, and sort of wonder what happens. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. I mean, you know, you know, the weird thing, too, is, you know, watching, you know, whether it was you guys when I was younger, watching guys in the field now, you know, there's something to having fans in the stands and having the home field advantage and being fueled by that. And, asking guys in all these scenarios we've seen, hey, go up to a spring training facility and play against the other team. It's going to be dead quiet. We'll have a radio broadcast, a TV broadcast, but you guys got to go play nine innings. Not fueled by anything. You know, I'm sure you get tired. I mean, that's that'd be tough, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, for sure. Hey, if I don't get upset with me, can you believe it's been 23 years since that 1997 <laughs> season? Can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you, you, you know, um, somebody asked me the other day about that team. And I was like, man, so much happened that when you when you actually just sit there for about five, ten minutes and kind of think about the team, I wasn't playing much, so I observed everything. CJ played, so it's sort of a blur. I would think it's a more of a blur for him because he's playing every day, he's involved with every pitcher. He's, he's getting his work in, you know, every day. So he's kind of like game 66 don't mean nothing to him. Well, game 66, <laughs> I'm kind of looking at like, what's going to happen next, right? And so you get a chance to see everything that happens and the craziness that goes on throughout the whole year. Right. And it's mind-blowing the, the things that has to happen for you to win. That's why it's so hard to repeat, that in my mind. So when you see these teams repeat or get to the – you know, get to the, get a chance to go for the chip again the next year, man. That's special because '97, it, it it was something, you know, definitely that was totally different when you when you really think about how you go about winning a championship and not just having the 25 game. I mean, 25 guys to start the season. At the end, you're like, dang. Jay Powell was the winner of Game Seven of the World Series. <laughs> Darren Dalton came in and cursed everybody out the first day. <laughs> you said that was the turning point, Cliff. I talked to you last year when we did the anniversary, and I asked you what was the turning point for you in that season. You said when was he got traded, he was he had been in the league a long time. He was on the you know the back nine of his career. He had the knee injuries. He was unbelievable in that postseason. Hit well over three hundred. But you said he turned it around. I, and look. I didn't think he was gonna come come in and turn around plan wise. I didn't think he was gonna come in and curse everybody out either on the first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, he called he called the meeting he called the meeting like a day or two after he got there. I mean, he I mean, I ain't never seen that like before. I mean, you got to realize we had a bunch of guys on the team. We had an all star team, right? We 
Grizzlies had an all-star team that year. And he came in and called a meeting right away. And when I tell you he ripped us, he ripped us apart because he he, he, he saw how we was playing on the other side and knowing we had a good team, but we was playing like with a bunch of country club guys. Like we just didn't really want it. And when they, and Cliff is right. He was a turning point of that team. Yeah. I felt, I just felt like he observed us differently because he actually was, you know, he was in our division in National League East. You know, he got a chance to see us and how we went about our business. And he probably noticed that our nemesis was the Atlanta Braves. Right, so he's like, well, how y'all gonna beat them? Cause, cause what y'all do is totally different. What Bobby Cox and the Braves do. Right. He, I guess he told every. He told you know. I, I remember what he called the, the whole clubhouse. He remember he called us a uh, bunch of a, a bunch of prima donnas in, in a country club. If I'm not mistaken, didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> that registered. Yeah, it really did. Because at that point, at Cliff, at that point, we was like, man, we had a good ball club, but we weren't quite just just grinding out the way we should have, right? We were winning games, and but one winning like we should have been winning, and he recognized it and knew it. What was your expectation coming into that season, though? You know, I know the media constantly puts expectations on teams, you know, the Nationals, the you know, whomever, even today's game. But when that spring, with the group of guys you had, Cliff, I think you and Bobby Bonilla signed that off season. Craig Council, Darren Dalton, and Matt Trainer came in during the regular season via acquisitions. But how good did you guys think you would be? We, well, we, we, go ahead, Craig. Yeah. No, CJ, you were there. I got traded there, Kyle. So I, I right. had no idea. In what March. Was, you came in March, right? Yeah, I came there in spring training, and they were already there. So I was just like, what the heck am I going to do? I looked at the outfield and thought, hell, I ain't playing. So I, <laughs> <laughs> how CJ, good did you guys think you'd be though charles how good did you guys legitimately you know think what? you'd be we knew on paper we were good and even sitting in the locker room we knew we were really good i mean we had a hell of a ball club i mean we just knew we had a lot of personalities and didn't know how we were gonna pull this thing together i mean you know we had some big personalities you know we had gary sheffield and you know <laughs> you know bobby bow and you know <laughs> You know, we had, you know, you know, you know, we had Morris's. We had some strong guys on a team that that um that could go on any other team and be be the number three hitters, number four hitters on every team pretty much. And so we knew we had a good team, but I'll tell you, Jim Leader did a great job of managing all those egos and personalities. And he was really good at that, man. He was excellent. I'm watching the yeah. game now. I guess you guys got an early one nothing lead in this game. So I need to know. What was the party like after you guys clinched the first ever postseason berth in franchise history in Montreal that night? <laughs> it was so good we all forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that. The first one in yeah. postseason history, you're in Montreal, which is a pretty wild place to my understanding. Exactly. Unbelievable. Exactly. I, I, I don't remember, but I know it must have been epic. All I remember, man, we came back in the locker room. We really celebrated. And I think a lot of us knew that the journey would still be long, but we really celebrated it because we came over a hump. Right. That even though we had a good team, you still got to win on the field. I mean, regardless of whatever happens, you still got to win games on the field. And, and to try to win that many games, to get into the playoffs, you know, we were excited, but knew we had a long way to go. Yeah. Do you guys think the underdog mentality that postseason? I, you know, you, you take care of the Giants. I mean, obviously, it was it was a crazy postseason, but nobody got, wanted to give you a chance against the Braves. Nobody wanted to give you a chance to, probably against the Indians. You, you had to fight back a ton. Did, did you kind of take that mentality? I truly believe we did. I mean, if you look at it, I mean, a lot of times when, you, when you're the underdog, man, you come in with a fighting mentality. And I truly believe we peaked at the right time. You know, when you think about sports, you know, Cal – you got to peak at the right time. You don't see a lot of teams win like all season and get to the playoffs right. and lose real quickly. But we peaked at the end. That's why Dutch and came coming at the, at, at the right time. We was going up playing right. these teams, the Giants and Atlanta. We was peaking, man. And they, even, you know, even Cleveland. I mean, that was a really good ball club and, and people weren't expecting us to win, but we were playing good baseball. 
Yeah, we won 92 games. So yeah. I think when you, to, to CJ's point about peaking at the right time, you can win 100 games. Don't mean nothing if you ain't good at that particular time. You, right. you, you, you can win a whole bunch early and lost a whole bunch late. And then you kind of got to a hundred plateau. You're like, oh, they're a good team. Not right. right now. And I think when you when you look at some of the moves that that Leland made as far as inserting Craig Council for our starting look like Louis Castillo, like we were like all sitting there going, hold on, man, you can't do that. Like we you can't do that move, but it, it, it he did it anyway. Mm -hmm. Um how you how you included Dutch without messing with CJ. Like we sitting there going, well, what Dutch gonna do? You just gonna come in here and start over CJ? Nah, it ain't happening. Oh, we're gonna put him at first base. Then, you know, mess with Mr. Mr. Marlin and Conine and his mm -hmm. mindset, but he was just doing things that he thought it was gonna, you know, propel us and put us in a position to win. And, it, you know, I don't think any, I think we questioned him amongst ourselves, but never got out to the meeting, which I thought was awesome. And I was young. Um, and I was always looking, you know, the next day, like, all right, he about to get blasted. Nobody was saying that. And I go, man, he has the respect of all, all these dudes in here. Superstar, all-star, it didn't matter. Not even in a bad way, but, I mean, there was a lot of egos, right? I mean, there's a lot of all-stars on that team. That was a, it, How long does that take to kind of mesh like that? I mean, there's a lot of guys that have had a ton of success. They want to do things their way. They know what's got them to that point. Is that kind of you kind of got to get over that until you kind of get rolling during the season a little bit. I truly believe, you know, it took a while. Um, but I think what made it work very well is that even though guys have great egos we had amongst our team, we all got along very well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. We got along very well, man. We can joke around and play around with each other. I mean, we had a, a great time. You look at guys like Alex Fernandez, he can joke all day, but when it's time to pitch, he's serious. You know, we, you know, we had some jokesters. I mean, you know, you had guys with a lot of, you know, animation like Al Leiter and, you know, I mean, he's right. full of animation and Kevin Brown was always serious, like all the time, but you know, we, we had a lot of guys, man, but somehow or another we came together and we didn't have no problems. I don't remember hardly any issues in the locker room about guys wanting to fight or get no. mad at each other. I mean, we didn't have none of that at all. No, no. I mean, I, like, like I said, you know, Kyle, CJ was getting ready to play every day. All right. I played Saturdays, Sundays. I, I didn't play. I, I was up and coming, still trying to find my way in the league. Got, got very lucky and blessed to go to that team. And it, and it taught me about preparation because I, I hadn't seen guys prepare like, 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 like a CJ or, or you know, how Sheffy compared, you know, even Kevin Brown, Kevin Brown to kill you on, on, on day he pitched. He, he literally kill right. you. Like, like if, if you walk on his way, he might just, I don't know what he would have done. <laughs> crazy to him. So when you see these dudes consistently getting ready, only thing that was going to stop us was us. Like if we went out there and just flat out just say, you know what? No, we ain't beating the Braves. Because I'm telling you, I didn't even get in that series. Um, but I think when you look at getting past the Giants, it was like, yeah, we're going to get past them. But these Braves, man, I don't know. And once that happened, it was like, all right, Cleveland, y'all good. But I don't, I don't think y'all going to beat us. And even our star pitching, Cam Brown, I don't think anybody thought he would lose twice, and especially to no disrespect to uh, – uh, Mohi uh, oh, oh, here, I think that was his name, Chow here. Um, he lost twice to him. So we like, hold up. You know, it's our star. But I think when you look at our team, we had a bunch of egos, but some of the best dudes you ever see or ever play with in, in, in you know, my, and definitely in my career. But just as far as dudes, boys club all day long, want to hang with them 24 7, everybody got home. I don't think people realize that sometimes with like world championship teams, whether it was 30 years ago or last year, like so oftentimes guys constantly come back to, it was the best clubhouse I've ever been a part of. We were always together. We were always doing something. And then you do hear stories about, you know, teams that might've been middle of the road, mediocre and 
everybody was on maybe a different program or I guess like a mentality goes so far, like to win a world series outside of talent too, huh? And that's true. I mean, we, you know, we had, when I talk about, we had competitors, you know, you, if you look at our pitching staff, we had guys come out of the bullpen, like cook. I mean, he was a competitor, man. He was a veteran guy at the time, but I mean, he knew what he was doing. I mean, we had a, a young Alpha Seca, but he was a competitor. We had Rob Nen coming out of the bullpen closing. I mean, you know, he, he would come at you. We had competitors. I mean, so, I mean, you have guys that wanted the baseball. They yeah. wanted the baseball when they came on the mound. And, and so and it was very difficult when, when, when Alex injured, you know, his arm at the time. Right. I mean, he was a workhorse for us. And for Alex to go down, but and for LeVon to step up the way he did, I mean, that was huge, man. That was huge. And, and, and that's the kind of team we really had. Yeah. And, and it goes to show you, too, even when Alex brought us all together to tell us that he won't be able to pitch. And you know, we sat there right in the, in the doorway. We walked in, you know, when we all came into the clubhouse. I think some of the big boys know. I think CJ kind of knew. But, like, all the rest of the boys didn't know. Um, and to see the tears from all the guys flowing down their faces sort of lets you know what type of clubhouse we had. Because right. you hear in, 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 in sports, next man up. Yeah, that's true. You know, Levon had to step up. We needed Levon. We needed dudes to step up. But, man, it was, it was, it was, it was awful to hear that man say that he wasn't going to be able to pitch. Because that's what he did. He, you know, he might have been a prankster and a jokester and always having a good time. But every time he pitched, Alex took that ball. And, you know, to see him and, and the hurt on his face, man, it just it just bought off something different in everybody. And I think we all, whether you was in the start nine, or supporting cast player, you felt like a responsibility to him to make sure you, you know, you, 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 you stepped up on me. And that's true. And that's why we all put that 32 in our hats, man. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Everybody that season? Yep. After yep. After that, we all wore 32 in our hats. Everybody yep. did. That's cool. That's awesome. You know, I was reading, um, is this story true? I know you mentioned Levon Hernandez. I found it today. After you guys win the World Series, he, he had bought himself like $130,000 Mercedes. He was happy to have and somebody vandalized that, like the mirrors got ripped off. Do you, are, did you guys, do you guys remember that? I was reading this story. I don't remember hearing that. I found Not a story that somebody had wrote like a couple of years ago that somebody vandalized his car, but he didn't seem to care because you guys had just won the World Series and he had bigger things to worry about. <laughs> a, a, a lot of stuff happened. That <laughs> I know we ended, a lot of us ended up at Waffle House. Okay. I know. <laughs> what now? What time was the sun up or down? Four o'clock in the morning. Man, I know after the world after the world series. I know after we left the stadium, me and my wife went to um right, right, right over on twenty seventh clip. I think the old snappers where you get that fried fish. <laughs> I, was I was starving. Well, you know, Cliff. A lot of people don't realize is that after we won that world series. You know, we all gathered back in the training room. And everybody had a chance to say something about that season and how they felt that year. And that was very special, man, because you, you're talking about just winning the World Series. Yeah. And we all went into the training room, and a lot of us had a chance to say some things and how we felt in the celebration of it. And a lot of people don't know that because there was no cameras in there and there was right. nothing going on. It was just us. I remember that. It, it, was, it was like... Uh, it was like Kyle going into a a, a, a smoky bar, but trying to get <laughs> some some of the best things you've ever heard in your life from your boys that you love more than <laughs> So imagine going to the smoky bar because everybody had cigars lit. Right. Everybody was, drunk. Everybody was still pouring liquor, and, and 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 Lila said, "I want everybody to say something." I said, "Oh boy, like." What am I gonna say, right? Like, who, like, you remember what you said, huh? Do you remember what you said? I, you know what? I think I just, I, I remember saying something like, "Man, this, this has been unbelievable. Thank you guys for giving me the opportunity." Because I just got, I got traded there in '97. I had no idea what was right. going on. She had been, you know, she had been there. But I was just like, "Man, thank you, man. This is, this is more than you could ever ask for." And, you know, I, I remember somebody. See, I don't know if it was that night or how we got our, our model, uh, the one heartbeat. 
Okay. I don't know if it came out of that night or whatever. Right, but that right, was our right. whole thing. That's awesome. Yeah. There was uh, we we had the, the like game seven on of the World Series or whatever it was. I, I guess it was last week, and they interviewed Jim Leland afterwards. I thought it was so cool. It gave me chills because I thought about the clubhouse before you guys win the World Series, and he said he walked in there. It was short, sweet, and to the point. And that's all he did is he looked all you guys in the eyes and said, "We're going to go win the World Series tonight." Like they gave me chills. I'm not there, but right. when your manager walks into the clubhouse before you go play at the time the biggest game of your life, that's I guess that's all the motivation you need to go take care of business. You know, one thing about, about Leland is that he, he knew when to come in there and say what he had to say. He knew when to get emotional. There's a lot of times, sometimes he'll come in there, he, he'll get emotional, man. He, he might cry on you a little bit. I mean, he'd get fired up and get emotional. And so, but he knew how to play that. And I, I, I remember too, Cliff, we were in Cleveland doing the World Series. And he called a meeting. It was snowing that night. I remember, never forget it was snowing that night. It was freezing. Oh, it was freezing. And he called a meeting. I swear to you, don't quote me, but I know because it's usually when I got to go warm the picture up. They had to be close to, like, say, the game started at 17 or whatever it is. It had to be around by 630, 625. But he called a meeting. And he started talking about how what a championship feel like. And, and he got all emotional. And I'm thinking, like, man, I got to go in this bullpen. I got to warm this pitcher up. My hands gonna be freezing. <laughs> but he literally like got emotional right before that game. And uh, but that's that's the kind of guy he was. Yo, he was different. I, I I remember during that season. So it was Kyle. It was my locker. So it was my locker. Kurt Abbott locker. Greg Zahn. Greg Zahn backed up obviously CJ. And. Uh, so we used to egg on, and this is how fun we, you know, when you talk about Leland and the type of dude is, we used to egg on like Greg's on because he felt like he was a star, right? He was like, I, I should be starting. I go, yeah, <laughs> you, you start on CJ, go ahead. <laughs> 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 I, want, I want you to go in there and tell Leland that you should start. You, go, you think so? I go, absolutely. Abby goes, absolutely. <laughs> and this is the type of dude Leland was. So CJ, you know, it's hot down here in the summertime. CJ, you know, is getting worn out playing every day. And, and Greg Zahn goes to Leland, I think I should play every day. And he goes, you do. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 and Zani says, yeah. And so I guess Leland calls CJ and goes, gives him a couple of days off. He goes, look, you're going to get money, you know, you're going to get Monday off, but we're going to play Zani Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Give you a couple of days off, you know, regroup, whatever. I think Zani went 0 for 21 with 19 strikeouts. <laughs> but that was leading way of saying, go ahead. If you want to do it, go Right? And, and, but it, it, it was just, it, it, it made me laugh because I was, you know, we, we needed something to keep us going. We was bench players. But to be able to have a dude that could, like, manage men consistently, right. whether he was starting or not. CJ, he was going, you know, hey, when you need to be out, that, that's cool. Me, you had to manage me. Like I was a guy that's sitting there. I'm, 20, I'm young. I, I don't know when I'm playing. Maybe I'm playing Friday night. Maybe I'm playing Sunday morning. So he managed us perfectly, and he threw us into situations that was uncomfortable. Like Devon White to, had a day off. He'd be like, "Go play center field." I go, "Huh? Like, who? Who me? Go play center field? No, nah, I can't play center field in the biggest ballpark when we played at Joe Robbie." It, it was like, you know, but he was like, look, you'll figure it out. And that, 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 that's, that's the one thing you so appreciate about him. Well, one thing you know about Leland is that you knew he was a gamer because I ain't never seen no manager yet come out with cliques on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he wore iron cliques <laughs> the manager game. <laughs> What were some of his mound visits like? <laughs> what were some of his mound visits like? <laughs> oh, his mound visits are short and sweet now. He come out there and curse you out real bad. And <laughs> he just said, give me the ball. He'll walk off. Let's go. I mean, he was he ain't gonna sit there and try to like long talk you. <laughs> give me the fucking ball. He'll get the ball. He gone, man. <laughs> he got, he, oh yeah, he ain't got time for that. Leland don't play, man. <laughs> hey. Hey, you made me think about something with them, with them damn cleats on. 
he comes into the back rack room and, and you know, everywhere else in the dugout had the rubber mat. So he could walk, you know, we all walked with the rubber mat. I was in there for some reason looking for a bat. You know, it was, it was you know, y'all y'all was on the field, CJ. I'm just standing there trying to feel, get a good feel. He comes in there and, and lights up a cigarette, but he got them damn spikes on. <laughs> and in the back room, it wasn't no rubber mat. So if you if you did anything awkward, your butt two feet up in the air, you gone, right? <laughs> sure enough, he comes in there going crazy about something that happened on the field. And I can't believe this and this and that. He's smoking a cigarette. And he must have did something. And both feet went up in the air and boom. <laughs> And I looked at him, I said, damn, Skip. And I said, well, hell, Kevin Rand is our, our trainer. I said, let me go get Kevin, because I don't know what to do with you, man. <laughs> Cigarette still burning. Feet up in the air. I said, man, this he was out of He was out of commission for a while, wasn't he? Like, wasn't he hurt? He hurt himself with <laughs> that thing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he looked that like the cool. most cool, calm, and collected guy. They were showing him on TV, and it looked like there, there was nights where he was managing the team, and it looked like he didn't even want to be there. He just had this straight face on and just letting you guys go out there, do your thing, and we'll see how the chips fall, I guess. Yeah, he was that guy, man. He didn't – I mean, it wasn't no no whole extra kind of talking to you and no. trying to explain stuff. And, you know, he wasn't that kind of guy. I mean, he he going to – you know, he going to smoke his little cigarette and <laughs> and you're not going to know he's smoking it. Nobody ever knew he's smoking a cigarette. He, I ain't never seen a guy can hide a cigarette in his hand and don't even know he's smoking it. I mean, in I the have no out, During the game. Yeah, doing the game. You don't even know he's smoking a cigarette. I mean, I, <laughs> he was a he was a champion at smoking a cigarette. Hey, he, he is the champion. You ain't lying. <laughs> but as far as being prepared, I got I got to set that. And you know what, fellas, CJ, you, you you didn't see it. Yeah. But as I started the season, I was on the end of the bench, not the end. So just watching the game, sort of trying to figure out what's next for me and blah, blah, blah. As I got to the middle of the season and so forth, I got closer to him. His preparation for later in the game, putting guys in positions to win the oh. pinch hit, because we had a good bench. I, Jim Eisenreich, John Candelos, you know, being John Wayne at one point, myself. He was so ready for any move, to counter any move, from the, from the polls and manager than anybody ever seen. I played eight different teams. Mm -hmm. To be able to see this dude do that consistently, start, you start to understand how you're going to win a National League. He, you can be totally different manager in the American League. I only got a chance to play American a little bit in my, in my career. But as far as being able to manage a National League, he was textbook. He was as textbook as it came to being able to manage a National League and there's only a select few that you saw, and I and that I saw my own two eyes, and then I may be gonna miss one, but Bobby Cox, Jim Leland, and Tony La Russa. When you talk about managing the National League and how they do they, uh, you know, sort of deal with their rosters, special special humans. He would he literally was, was, like manage was, you guys to wins. He would just manage you to wins. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, when I tell you, he knew, like Cliff say. He knew the moves like way ahead of time. He understood what was going to happen. It seemed like before the game was going to was was going to going to start because, I mean, I think now when you look at analytics, he was that champion back then on analytics, just doing yep. it off his head, understanding the moves that supposedly made. I mean, he knew. I mean, right away. I mean, he come jumping that dugout. He knew right away what he wanted to do. I mean, regardless of the situation, like he already had this thing mapped out, and he was he was a genius with that man. Yeah, and that's what you, you're right, Steve. Because to me, to be able to talk, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, talk now on MLB Network or when I'm doing game analysis or whatever, it's very hard for me to sit there and I and I've said it numerous times. I, I, the Dodgers have been great. Dodgers have been great, but Dave Roberts, in my opinion, I don't. I, for me, Dave Roberts goes, you got me here, I'm going to stick with you. Can't knock it, but Jim Lee is going to what CJ was saying earlier when we got on here. Are you peeking at the right time or not? Because if you're not, I got to make a move. 
I I know he didn't want to put Craig Council in there for Jose. I mean, uh, for Louis Castillo, but he did it. Like it wasn't like you know he was like ah well you know what um, Louis got me here I got to stick with him. He was like nah, hey Jeff Conan, you're Mr. Marlin. We're gonna bring Dutch in. You're gonna play. Like so, when you saying these things, it's hard for me now to go against the grain. Go well you know what. Game seven, I'm not starting Chan Ho Park in the biggest game of my life. Game seven, World Series against Astros. I can't do it. Right. Yeah, Chan Ho's been good, but I can't do it right now because he hasn't shown that he's going to get over the hump with these dudes. Maybe somebody else. That's how Leland managed. Right or wrong, I felt it was right because he owed it to all of us to win a game to, or to at least put his position to win. Nothing against how great CJ was or how great Kevin Brown was. If CJ was like, man, I'm scuffing behind the plate and, and I'm not swinging well, you would hope C would be like, all right, man, somebody else get in there and help hold it down. Just this one game. I'll be back tomorrow, but like tonight, I just don't have. I'm watching this game. These are some tight gray uniforms you guys sported on the road. <laughs> that looks a little different. Yeah, it looks different. <laughs> that was a style you- back then, though. We had more fitted. Uniforms hey, back then, it seemed like. Chef, 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 Sheffield pants, you see his calf muscles, like, like the veins. And I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Bonilla just about popped out of his top. That was skin <laughs> tight on him. Hey, man, that was a look, man. That was a look, man. Everything was fitting, long in the leg, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that was what was it like in the postseason, like the roar of the crowd at whatever it was called, I guess, Pro Player Stadium? Just listening back to old games on the radio, and hearing it, it sounds unbelievable. It was it was remarkable, man, just to be in that stadium. And 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 for me, I mean, it, it was very special for me because being the first draft pick of the Marlins, right. playing at the University of Miami, back when there was no Florida Marlins here. I mean, you, you know, University of Miami baseball was like the baseball here in South Florida. Right. And to be able to in my third year in the big leagues, um, be part of a World Series team and to see that kind of crowd that was there. And and it was a dream come true for me personally. I know it was um, to be a part of that. I, I've never been involved in nothing like that before in my life, man. Just having a World Series in a football stadium where we packed the house. Yeah. And hearing that kind of noise, I mean, there's nothing I've, I've ever done before that after that that gave me that kind of feeling you know, in the game of baseball, being part of that thrill. Yeah, it was different. 75,000, see, you know, it was, you know, and I guess the difference was they hung on to every single pitch. Like CJ would hold his love there. They'd be like, ow, like I'm probably going to give it to us. (laughs) It was up, down, up, down for four hours and 30 minutes. And both sides, you know, countering moves, making plays, missing plays. I mean, it's it's it's, it's something you'll never forget. Um, I think game three, out fourteen. What was it? Fourteen eleven ended up being fourteen. We won the game. Fourteen yeah, yeah. eleven. Game three. I thought for sure I was gonna have an ulcer. Like, I thought for sure <laughs> something. Was gonna give, my heart was gonna give. Something was gonna give. Like, I couldn't take it. We, I mean, it, it was, it was, it was almost thirty hits. I think each team made four errors or three errors. It was, it was just one of those games where we like. I remember getting home going, "What was that?" Like, right, right. Uh, <laughs> this is the World <laughs> Series, man. You supposed to think you thinking three two, you yeah. know, crazy five four five three, fourteen eleven. We scored seven runs in the ninth inning, like. Yeah, that was it was crazy. crazy. Yeah. But th- th- those things happen, man. The up know, and down, back and forth was, was incredible. That, when you, when that, you think about the that. when you say mention about the crowds, Cliff, I would say probably my rough, my toughest time was that when I really felt like I couldn't do nothing anymore is the, the game seven in the ninth inning. And when I hit that base hit to right field to take Moses from first to third, and Greg Zahn came to pitch run for me. When I tell you those last two innings were the longest two innings of my life. Because, you know, when you're playing and when you're in it, you don't feel it like that. But 
when I came out of the game, I went from the clubhouse to the dugout. Clubhouse dugout. I ran about 20 times, didn't know what to do. I'm back and forth. <laughs> <So> <laughs> hey, I say those the worst times of my life, man, just because you just out of the game no more. There's nothing you can do about it. You just gotta watch. It was crazy. When we're watching it, right? We imagine us from the start. Man. I know, right? <laughs> I know. When, when Milk May hey, say get a bat, I'm like, huh? No, I'm watching the game. <laughs> so you're watching the game. <laughs> you know, and, and some, you know, that I've told a couple times, and um, Al Lighter obviously started game seven. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why he chose me, but we was getting some food. He was walking in the clubhouse. And he stopped and he was, you know, Al crazy. CJ, you know more than me, <laughs> crazy. And uh, he goes, What pitch should I throw? The first pitch of the game. <laughs> so don't ask me. He goes, Well, whatever pitch I go, if, if I throw it and execute it, we're going to win. I go, Hell, I'll stop, man. Don't even put that pressure on me to make that. He goes, he goes, something that they ain't going to look for. I go, well, hell, your curveball. And they know you. All you got one out the pitches is cut. Like, you <laughs> <gonna cut it? laughs> he goes, I'm going to throw the curveball. And see, I don't know if you called for it. He shook you off first. But he threw a curveball. He did. He threw a curveball. And I think he, I think um, we talked about it. I think he decided he wanted to start a game out with a curveball, which was very unusual. I mean, yeah. <laughs> And that conversation started with me early when we were Are you serious? Forward. I he never said, knew that. If I throw a curveball for a strike, we going to win. Now, y'all, are, now, I know you know, see, when I left that conversation, I go, shoot, we're going to lose the damn game. <laughs> I throw a curveball for a strike. <laughs> I said, dang <laughs> Gave away game seven right there. I said, man, I always went back to him and said, we'll just throw the cutter. He goes, throw the curveball. And sure enough, he threw a curveball for a strike. I said, at least I'm off the hook. We got to win the game, but I'm off the hook on that at least. He threw it he for rarely, a strike. He, he rarely ever throw curveballs. You know, wow. he, he, he don't throw curveballs very often at all. I mean, um, all he, he has one pitch. <laughs> he, he got that cutter, that cut fastball. That's really his one pitch. And so a lot of times, I would just get – I'd give him a shake off just for him to shake off, but we all know it's a fastball. <laughs> I tell him to shake off, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was, he was different. <clears throat> That's awesome. Hey, fellas, before I let you guys run, I know we have some of the uh, the Marlins Home Run Rewards members that have joined us and watched us tonight. So a Home Run Rewards members for those guys is World Series. So for the Marlins Home Run Rewards members, if you're hanging out with us, we appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun, guys. Um, World Series is the Home Run Rewards bonus code. If you go to Marlins.com, I know you guys that are watching can take care of that. I, hey, Cliff, you're drinking your wine. You all sat there for a couple of weeks. I see behind you that's a majestic uh, a wine <laughs> setup. Look here. Um, I figured the best way to quarantine is to make that <laughs> Enough for that behind you to make sure you don't lose it around this time. Kyle, so it's 745 right now. Yeah. When I finish this bottle, it'll be about nine. Yeah. <laughs> Get in bed and go to sleep and look forward to another day at home, man. That's how I look at this whole rack behind me. So I figure by the time I'm done with this, we should be out in the streets. <laughs> and you guys are playing teacher now, right? With the kids and stuff. I mean, now you now you got to be a teacher too. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I have no idea what these kids doing in school. I, I, you know, I look at some of their homework. I'm like, you know, I, I Siri or Google. When one day, if they all know, we're in trouble. Uh, I have no shot. <laughs> well, my days are over. All my kids do now is that they go on Zoom and they look at football plays with their team. So I don't worry <laughs> about that. <laughs> <laughs> CJ, is your is your one boy still at Tennessee? He was a wide receiver at Tennessee, right? Yeah, he wide receiver. He redshirted last year. Okay. Um, so now he's come back again uh, for his final year. Uh, he's who was set to graduate in May, but they canceled that, and so now yeah. he's going to come back and play in the fall. And that's and, awesome. Uh, like that's some of my youngest great. boys, tight end Georgia Southern, so they're doing good. Man. Hey, they're before doing good. I, hey, before I let you guys run, I know we got cut short in spring training, but I did want to ask you. 
what what you, what you made of the Marlins? I mean, Michael Hill, I thought they did a really good job this offseason bringing in some legitimate major league talent, and they kind of lengthened the lineup. They had some power, man. I was really looking forward to watching these guys, and hopefully we'll get a chance to in some type of abbreviated season. But before I let you guys run, I did want to get your thoughts on the guys. I think they um, added some pretty decent pieces. I mean, what I, I like that, you know, we all know, man, it's about pitching, man. It's, it's about putting guys in that mound, you're starting pitching, and have a couple guys come out of that pen later on to, to set the table and close the game out. And I think they did a good job as far as, you know, adding a few veteran guys and, and adding some guys on the pitching staff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. See, you know, there comes a time where, um, you know, it's time to not be, you know, the doormat of the division and, right. and where people just feel like they can come in and, you know, uh, win a series. It's time to flip that. And I think Jeter made some great comments this spring. You know, I'm at MLB Network, Kyle, and CJ, you know that. Um, and he, he did a 30 for 30. Great conversation about winning. Great com conversation about culture and how, you know, it's, it, you have to get past just saying, you know, I'm in the big leagues. I'm right. very comfortable in the big leagues. Getting complacent in the big leagues, that's not, that's not acceptable. So, you know, some things have happened. You've lost some really talented players, but you've gained some players. Guys have to step up. Guys have to now start understanding that your time is up as far as learning the league and getting your feet up on you. Three, four years in the league, I'm putting a lot of responsibility on Lewis Brinson. I talk to him a lot in his offseason. It's time for you to shine. It's time for you to be the guy. No pressure on who, you, who they gave up to get you. None of that stuff. It's about these dudes putting W's in the win column. And if they do it collectively and play smart baseball, I think they'll do a lot better than we've seen in the past. Um, and, and it's one game at a time. Not trying to not trying to do too much. Win a series here. Win the games you should win. And I think you'll see a difference. Well, I hope they get on the field soon. Uh, CJ, Cliff, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you to the folks watching, hanging out with us tonight. Thank you for sharing some stories from that 1997 season. Uh, before I let you go, stay safe, stay healthy, best to you and your families, and thank you so much. No doubt. Hey, thank you, Kyle. Appreciate it. All, All right. right. Be good. Love. All right.